Client-side validation for forms in the browser is a really nice to have user experience feature and it is expected in modern web development. In this video, we will create a registration form and validate the inputs of the user and as always, you can find the source code in the description. As a reminder, you should always validate the user inputs on the server side too. And now without a further ado, let's get started. We will first implement our HTML markup in our index.html file. I'll start with the HTML file boilerplate and first I will include all the external files and style sheets. I include my index.js file with the script tag and the important thing here is the defer keyword. It will make sure that the DOM is ready when the script runs, so we have every element of the form in the page already. Then I include my style sheet with the link tag and I also include a Google font called Poppins that I will use for this example, but feel free to use the font of your choice. In the body, I add the container div, and inside that we will create our form. I give it an ID of form, and for the action we will just use a slash because we have no intent to really submit this form. Inside the form, I give it a title with an H1, and then we can add our input fields. For every input in our form, I'll add a wrapper div with import control class. We will use it to style our form and it will also help us to show the error messages. Next we will add a label for our later input field with username text and the for attribute of username. Then we can add our input tag. I will give it an ID of username because we will use this ID to grab this DOM element from JavaScript. I give it name username to match the label and provide it type text. Then we only need to add a div with class error that will contain the error messages specific for this field. Now we just have to repeat this input control approach for every other field that we plan. Next I will create the field for the email and what you have to look for here is that the ID should be email and the type should be text. The next thing we will add is the password. Here the ID will be not surprisingly password and the type should be password too, so the input will be hidden. The last input field that we will add is the password confirmation one. The ID here will be password too and you should set type password here as well. The last thing that we have to add is a button which we will use to submit the form. Don't forget to add type submit to it. If you check it in your browser, you can see that we have a pretty ugly form, but it has everything that we need. There are some built-in ways to validate your form inputs in HTML. For example, you can set it as required, or if you set the input type to email, it will check whether if it's a valid email or not. If we open up our page now, we can see if we hit the sign up button, it does the checks for the username and the email field. The bad thing about this is that we can't really customize it and that's why we will use JavaScript to do that. So it's time to write back everything and we will do the implementation in JavaScript later. Now it's time to make our form more beautiful. Let's create and open up our styles.css file. For the body I will use a linear gradient background and I will set the font that I included in our HTML file. For the form I will set a width and center it horizontally with margins and give it a little top space, add some spacing with 20 pixels of padding, set it a white background color, give it a border radius and set a little font size. For our form title I will set a dark color and center it. For the submit button I will set a little bit of padding, give it a border radius, remove the browser defined border and give it a blue background color. I'll also make it full width by providing width 100% to it. For the import control I will use display flex and flex direction column and to the inputs inside of it I will set a border with a little bit of border radius, set its display to block and make its width 100%. I'll also add some padding and declare the font size. I'll also remove the blue outline which is browser default by providing outline 0 for the input focus. Now I'll add two CSS rules which will modify the color of the input's border when the input control has either a success or an error class. 
we will apply these classes from JavaScript to represent the outcome of the validation. Last but not least, we will add some styles to our error display div. We will give it a text color of red, a smaller font size and a little bit of height. If we save everything and open up our page, we can see that it looks way better now. Of course the validation is not working and we can't see the red and green outlines, but we will do that in JavaScript right now. So open up our VS code and create an index.js file. The first thing that we need to do in JavaScript is to save a reference for each form element. We will get them by their ID, which we specified in the HTML file. We will save a reference for the form, the username input field, the email, the password, and the password confirmation field. Next, we will have to add an event listener on the form on the submit event. We call the prevent default method on the event to prevent the form from submitting because we want to validate our inputs. To do that, we will call the validate inputs function, which we will soon implement. This will trigger on every form submit. The first thing we have to do in this function is to get the value of all the input fields. I'll use trim at the end because it will remove all the white spaces that the string have. Now we have to add every validation condition that we want for each value. Let's start with username. This is a required field, so we first will check whether it is an empty string or it has some value. If it's an empty string, we will set an error. For that, we will write a function which receives an HTML element and an error message as a parameter. Based on the element provided, we will get its parent, which is the input control, and save a reference for the error display, which is inside the input control as a div, and set the inner text of our error display to be the message that we provided in the parameter. And then we add the error class to our input control and remove success class if it's present. This will add the red border to our input field. Now we just have to call this function with the username element and our error message. If a username is given, then we call the set success method. So let's create that. It will only receive an element as a parameter. We will get its parent element and the error display. We will clear the text in the error display with an empty string and add the success class and remove the error class. Now we just only have to call this set success with the username element in the else section. Now we have to do these checks for every input element. If the email value is empty, we set an error just like we did before with the username. As if the user provided an email, which we will check whether it is a valid email address or not. I use a regular expression to check this, but feel free to copy it from the source code. This way our isValidEmail function we are returned true if the user provided a valid email address and false if it's not in the right format. Now we have to call this function to check whether the user provided email is in a valid format. If it's not, we will set an error with provide a valid email address. Else, we will set it as success. Next, we will check the password's value. First, we will check if there are any value. And if there's not, we will set an error message. And if there is a value, we will check its length. And if it's less than eight, we set an error message. Else, we set success for the password field. The password confirmation check will be familiar. First, we will check whether it has a value. Then we will check whether it has the same value as the password field above. If they do not match, then we set an error. Otherwise, we will set that field as success too. And that is everything that we need for our form validation. If we open up our browser now, save everything and refresh, then we can see that if we provide a valid value, the border should be green. Otherwise, we have a red border and an error message below the text field. And that's it for this video. If you enjoy the content, you should subscribe to my channel. I see you guys in the next video.